So, <laughs> the last time we were talking about the optimal capital structure. Who can tell me what two ways can the company get money? Debt and equity, right? So, just I want to clear up about how much debt we have and how much debt equity we have. There's two main ways. One is debt to capital ratio. And the other one is debt to equity. So these are two ratios. So we have debt of 30. Now let's say maybe more obvious. We have big debt, debt of 90. Okay? We have equity of 10. I want to tell you, you to tell me what is my debt to capital ratio and what is my debt to equity ratio? Who can tell me? Without doing the calculation, just looking at the number, you can tell me easily. What is debt to capital ratio? How do I calculate that? Debt over debt plus equity. So what's that ratio going to be? 90 over 100. So what's the answer? It's going to be 0 0.9. Okay? Or 90%. Okay? Then, what about debt to equity ratio? How can we calculate the debt to equity ratio? We're comparing debt to equity. Debt divided by just equity this time. So what's my debt to equity ratio? Nine. Nine parts debt for one part equity. We have 90 debt, one equity. Nine parts debt for one part equity. Ratio, of nine to one. Nine to ten, nine to one. Okay, nine. What's that in percent? What's nine in percent? Nine hundred percent. So just, we don't need, we shouldn't confuse these two different calculations, right? First one, we're comparing debt to the total capital of the company. That's going to be, in this case, 90%. Ratio, right? This is the one we'll mainly be using. But we can see on Yahoo Finance, they use the debt to equity ratio. Sometimes, for the weighted average, we use this one. Right? Debt to capital and equity to capital. But, when we're doing the unlevered beta calculating, we use this one. The debt to equity ratio. So sometimes we use the different uh, calculations. Both of these calculations, are telling us how much debt our company has compared to equity. Okay? There are the two main calculations to tell us how much of our company is debt, how much of our company is equity. So, when we were doing our project, we did the better one, which is that we found the market value of debt and the market value of equity. But we we can also use the book value of debt and the book value of equity. So, if we look at Yahoo Finance, let's look at a company like Coca-Cola, just for example, and have a look at their numbers. So if we look at Coca-Cola and key statistics, we find their debt to equity ratio. So we can see here for Coca-Cola, total debt, 46 billion, or 42, 42 billion, okay? Debt to equity ratio, 146%, okay? So we saw here this is 900%, so 146%. So does Coca-Cola have more debt or more equity? Which does Coca-Cola have more? If it's debt to equity ratio, is 146%. Does Coca-Cola have more debt or more equity? Debt. Debt is higher than equity. It's going to be more than one. It's going to be more than 100%. Okay? So if we look at this number on Yahoo Finance, we can tell that Coca-Cola uses more debt than equity. Does that make sense? Do you agree that Coca-Cola should use more debt than equity? 
Do you want to lend money to Coca-Cola? <coughs> if you lend money to Coca-Cola, do you believe that Coca-Cola can pay you back in the future? What percent do you believe Coca-Cola will pay you back? 90%, 95%, 99%? 99 99.9%? 100% .9 sure Coca-Cola can pay you back? Which? What are you? If you lend money to Coca-Cola now, in 10 years, will Coca-Cola be able to pay you back the loan or not? Yes, how, how sure are you? 99%? Why, why, why do you say you're 1% not sure? Do you think people will stop drinking Coca-Cola in the next 10 years? No, because something can happen in the Third World War. You could have the Third World War? But people might still be buying Coca-Cola. In the Second World War, people were still buying Coca-Cola. Right? Yes? Did Coca-Cola's bondholders get their money back during the Second World War? We have to check and see, but maybe they did, right? The soldiers were still drinking Coca-Cola. So we guess that we we're going to get the money back. So do you want to lend money to Coca-Cola? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, right? You can lend money to Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola can get a low interest rate from the bank. Therefore, Coca-Cola is going to have more debt because it can get loans at a low interest rate. So it's going to have a higher debt and less equity. We saw in the last class that managers prefer debt to equity, right? First they prefer to use their own profits, then second they prefer debt, and then they prefer equity. We said the main point is control. Managers want to have control of the company. Okay, so if they, ha if they have a lot of debt, they have more control of the company. Then equity, they're giving away control. So, if we look at this number, if we go here, is our debt over debt plus equity going to be higher than 50% or lower than 50%? This one for Coca-Cola is 104, debt over equity is 1.46, 146%. So that's the debt to equity ratio. But if we look at debt to capital, is debt over debt plus equity going to be more than 50% or less than 50%? Which is higher, debt or equity? Debt is higher, right? So debt over debt plus equity, more than 50% or less than 50%? More. More. We have more debt than equity, right? Debt is more than 50%. That's what we're saying. It's the same sentence, right? Debt is more than 50%. We have more debt than equity. So we have these two main measurements. Of course, uh, we can go to the balance sheet here of uh, Coca-Cola and compare, let's compare for mar market value and book value of equity and debt. That's also confusing, right? Here we can see market value of equity, 176. What about in uh, book value? So if we look at their balance sheet, what is the book value of equity? Just 30. Okay, what was the market value? Okay, so uh, 170, so we can see it's different, right? The book value and the mark value. So, do you have any questions about the debt to capital or debt to equity ratio? If I asked you in the exam, will you be able to calculate both of those? If I say, the company has this much debt and this much equity, what is the debt to capital ratio? What is the debt to equity ratio? Will you be able to tell me? Yeah. It's quite simple calculation, right? Debt over debt plus equity. Second one, debt over debt equity. Okay? So we want, what we want to find is, we're looking at this one. What percent is best for the company? How much percent debt, how much percent equity should we have? So we discussed in the last class the benefits of debt and equity, right? Tax benefits of debt, discipline for management, problems with debt, bankruptcy costs, agency costs, and loss of flexibility if we have too much debt. Okay. But we said that the managers 
like using uh, debt because they have more control. But they also value flexibility. So they don't want to use too much debt. If they use too much debt, they're going to have less flexibility. So now we're going to talk about uh, using the calculation to find out the best debt to equity ratio. So basically what we're going to do is find out at which percent debt and which percent equity is the cost of capital the lowest. Okay? Cost of capital is the weighted average of our cost of debt and cost of equity. So there are some other ways that we can do this using the calculation, but the most common way is the cost of capital approach. So we're not going to study these ways. Okay? Just they exist. But this is a common one. So this cost of capital approach says the best, when we say optimal it means the best, the best debt ratio is the one that minimizes, minimize means makes lower, the cost of capital for a firm. So uh, the value of a firm is the present value of cash flows to the firm with discounted back at the cost of capital. So when we are doing our when we are checking our returns, finding the net present value, we're using the cost of capital to decide whether to take the project or not. Okay? The cost of capital is the discount rate. We have a project, we invest 100, in year 1 we make 50, in year 2 we make 50, year 3 we make 50. Okay? We use our cost of capital is our discount rate. Cost of capital equals 10%. Okay? What is the net present value? I have to get this is going to be 50 over 1.1 to the power of 1 plus 50 over 1.1 to the power of 2 plus 50 over 1.1 to the power of 3. Okay? So you'll need to be able, this is the calculating the net present value. Okay? You need to be able to do this calculation. Okay, we, for example, for the exam, we don't have too many calculations, so this is an important one, right? So everybody should be able to do this, right? We do the calculation, and we compare, is it more than 100 or less than 100, right? This is minus 100 at the start. Then this plus this plus this, greater than zero or less than zero, take the project. So obviously my cost of capital is important. If my cost of capital goes up to 20%, here, my discount is going to be 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, okay? Maybe in the end, my NPV will be negative. If my cost of capital is lower, my cost of capital goes down to 5%, then this is going to be 1.05, 1.05, 1.05, 1.05. So the lower the cost of capital we have, okay? The more profit our company can make, the better returns we get. Do you understand that idea? Yeah. Cost of capital is higher, are we going to make more profit or less profit? Yes. Cost of capital is lower, are we going to make more profit or less profit? Yeah. More profit, okay? The discount rate. Cost of capital is used as the discount rate when we're getting the present value, okay? So when we're finding the value, we use cost of capital to discount. So the point is, if we can make the cost of capital low, minimize, we can make more value, okay, for the company. It's NPV, net present value. Do you understand value? The value of the project will be higher if we can minimize our cost of capital. So now we are going to see which debt to equity ratio is going to give the lowest cost of capital. So first of all, discuss this question with your partner. Can equity ever be cheaper than debt? So our company is getting money from equity and debt. So which one is cheaper? Equity or debt, which is cheaper? When you did your cost of capital calculation for your company, which was cheaper? Cost of equity or cost of debt? Which was lower? Cost of debt. Cost of debt. So the question is, is debt always cheaper? Or could equity be cheaper sometimes? Discuss with your partner. What do you think? Yes or no? 
If you say yes, you should be able to say guess why. If you say no, why? show of hands. Who thinks that yes, equity can be cheaper than debt? Who thinks that no, equity is never cheaper than debt? Okay, let's try again. Everybody put up your hand. Who thinks yes? Hands up. Equity could be cheaper than debt. Okay, this time, who thinks no? Hands up. Okay, so the answer is no, right? There may be some very extreme case where a company has a very low beta, right? It's moving against the market. But in that case, it doesn't matter because if, you, if your equity is cheaper than debt, you're not going to get any loan, right? But it's very, very rare. So we just say no. Equity is not cheaper than debt. Why? Can anybody tell me why? Why is equity always more expensive than debt? What's the key word? Key word begins with R, ends with K, has IS in the middle. Risk. Risk. Huh? Risk. Very good. How did you know? <laughs> Which is riskier? Lending money to the company or buying stock in the company? Buying stock. Why is buying stock riskier than, buying, than lending money? Because uh, in case of uh, bankruptcy of the firm, you will not get any money. Okay, so we're talking about the order, order of claims on the money. Do you understand claim? Claim means, uh, did you watch the movie Far and Away with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman? When they went to the US, they stake a claim on the land. They put down the flag and they got all the land for themselves. In the US, before, right? They gave away land for free 200 years ago. Okay, you just have to make a claim. Go to the land, put a flag in the land. This is my land. Okay? There's a famous movie with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman where they do that, called Far and Away. It's quite interesting, right? But claim means I claim this, it's mine. Okay? So if the company goes bankrupt, we have a financial problem. So the company goes bankrupt. Okay, then who is going to get the money first? The stockholders or the bondholders? Who gets the first claim on the money? Bondholders. Bondholders, the lenders. Okay, I get the first claim. If there's any mo money left over, you can get something back, right? Because the owners lose control. When your company goes bankrupt, the owners lose control and the lenders get control of the company. Okay? Everything changes when your company goes bankrupt. So the lenders will get the money back first. Then later the stockholders will get money back. Okay? Also, just generally it's more risky. The price of your stock can go up and down. Right? But the price of your bond doesn't go up and down like that. Okay? You get the stable payment. So you said it's a basic concept in finance. You get the same return as measured to your risk. Okay? Bonds is less risky, lower return. Stock is more risky, higher return. Which is more risky, real estate or stocks? What do you think? Stock. Investing in stocks or investing in real estate? Which can change more, the price? Stocks probably, right? At real estate you'll always get some money back, right? But stocks you could lose everything, the company goes bankrupt. But if you buy real estate you'll always get some money back. So which do you think gives a higher return over the long term? Investing in real estate or investing in stocks? stocks? Yes, you get a higher return over the long term investing in stocks than real estate. Okay?
But why? Stocks is more risky than real estate. So you have to get a higher return. Otherwise, people wouldn't invest in stocks. Okay? The company has to pay you dividends and give you a higher return to encourage you to invest in stocks. So it's a basic idea in finance. We get rewarded for the risk we take. Okay? So therefore, when a company is selling debt, the price of debt is going to be cheaper. People are taking less risk. The company needs to pay less money to them in return. Stockholders are taking more risk. The company needs to give them more money. So the cost of equity for the company will be higher. Okay? We need to pay back more money to the, our owners. They took more risk. So here we can see, this is a textbook example. Uh, applying the, the cost of capital approach. So here we can see this is our debt over debt plus equity. So this is debt to capital ratio, debt over debt plus equity. Here we have 10% debt, 90% equity. 20% debt, 80% equity, right? 90% debt, 10% equity. So what we do is we, we find the cost of equity at each different one. And we find the cost of debt at each different one, okay? And then we find our cost of capital at each different percentage. So we can see it's not that different. Cost of capital is 10.5% at zero debt. Cost of capital is 11.4% at 100% debt. Okay, we can see here that at 10%, our cost of equity is 11%. But as our debt gets more, our cost of equity goes up. Does that make sense? Cost of equity goes up the more debt we have. Why? Yes. Which is more risky, a restaurant with 90% debt or a restaurant with 0% debt? 90% debt, right? When times are going hard, they still have to make the interest payment. The restaurant with 0% debt, in hard times, they have no interest payment to make, okay? So we already accounted for this. When we calculated our bottom up data, we checked first what industry is the company in, okay? Then we found the industry beta, okay? Bottom up beta. Do you remember in your project, you found the industry beta. What industry is your company in? What is the average risk for that type of business? And then two, what did we do next after that? After finding the beta for the industry, what did we do next? We made, well, if we had different industries, we made a weighted average, right? Then what did we do next? What was the next step we did to find our bottom of beta? First, we found the industries. We found the beta for the industries. And second, we, this was the unlevered beta. So what did we need to do? Yes, we needed to calculate our levered beta. So we needed to, what information did we need to calculate our levered beta? Get the equity ratio, okay? So first thing that, we said for bottom up beta that decides how risky a company is, is the industry, okay? If our company was Coca-Cola, did anybody do Coca-Cola? Some group did Coca-Cola, right? Which group? Yes, what was the unlevered beta for Coca-Cola? More than one or less than one? Slightly more than one? Are you sure? Can't remember, let's check on the... Anyway, the soft drink industry is not going to be that risky, right? So we check here for Coca-Cola, it's around 1, right? 1, 1 1.02. This is levered beta. So unlevered beta is going to be, for Coca-Cola, they have a lot of debt. So the unlevered beta is going to be about 0.6 or 0.7, right? Whereas if you took Gucci handbags, their beta is going to be higher, much higher. So depending on the industry, we have risk. But the second part, of our bottom up beta was debt. Company which has more debt has more risk or less risk? More debt? Company more risk or less risk? So if you have zero debt, your debt equity ratio is zero. 
We don't add anything onto this beta, and the beta stays low. If you have a lot of debt, high debt to equity ratio, we add on a lot to this beta, right? And your company is much more risky. So that's what we can see here. When we, when we increase our debt to equity ratio, the cost of equity is going up, okay? We are making this number bigger for our levered beta, and the beta is higher. Cost of equity is risk-free rate plus beta times the risk premium, so beta is higher. Cost of equity will also be higher, okay? Uh, cost of debt, if we calculate our cost of debt with the interest expenses, interest expense ratio, higher interest expenses, higher interest ex expense ratio, Lower rating, higher cost of debt. Okay, so as we have more debt, our cost of debt also goes up. If we think about that as common sense, who do you want to lend money to? A restaurant with zero percent debt or a restaurant with ninety percent debt? You prefer to lend money to them, right? So their cost of debt will be cheaper. Okay, their rating of the company with look with less debt is going to be better, and their cost of debt will be cheaper. So the cost of debt also goes up. But we can see that cost of debt is lower than cost of equity, 5%. Cost of equity, 11%, right? So even though both of them are going up, we're using a higher percentage of debt every time and a lower percentage of equity. So the cost of capital is not changing that much, right? Both of these are going up continuously, but here we're using all equity, almost all equity and very little debt. And here we're using almost all debt and very little equity, okay? So, look at this row. What is the best debt to capital ratio for this company? Who can tell me? Where is the cost of capital lowest? At what percent? What percent of debt is cost of capital lowest? 5.7. 5.7? at 40%, right? 40% debt, 60% equity. Then uh, we are going to have cost of capital will be lost, 10.14, right? And this will give us, they just did an equation for net present value. We can see that it's going to give a higher, the highest net present value. If we just take next year's cash flow and divide by cost of capital, then we get this highest number, okay? So, that's all we're doing here, is calculating at each point how much does equity cost, how much does debt cost, what is my cost of capital, weighted average of debt and equity, right? So here, I think we can look at the cost of capital equation again, because we need, the exam is next week, so if I give you the cost of capital Calculation, will you be able to do that on your exam? So I tell you, equity is 11%. Debt is 5.1%. Okay? We have, I will tell you, debt over debt plus equity, or just I will write debt to capital ratio is 10%. Uh, okay? So I want you to tell me, what is the cost of capital? So do the calculation. Now, try this calculation, okay? Everybody try the calculation. Equity, cost of equity, 11%. Cost of debt, 5.1%. Debt over debt plus equity is 10%. What is my cost of capital? We need to find the weighted average. We have 5.1% is cost of debt. Yes. Cost of equity 11%, cost of debt 5.1%. Amount of debt 10%, amount of equity 90%. It's just a simple weighted average calculation. Okay. 
Okay, I have 10% of one number, I have 90% of the other number. What is the way to that works? Everybody needs to do this one day. that you've written the correct answer. So can you do on the board? Show the students how you made the correct answer. In this case. Just huh? Just number. Yes, just write down what you did. Here you go. You can explain on the So, 
if uh, that uh, divided by that plus equity equals 1.0.1, so that means that equity divided by that plus equity equals uh, 0 0.9. That's why we multiplied cost of equity by 0 0.9 plus 5.1 multiplied by 0 0.1 and we got 10.41 okay, okay, so again just weighted average calculation, right? If debt is 10%, that means equity has to be 90%, okay? Debt and equity is going to be 100% together. So we multiply Debt is 10%, so we multiply debt by 10%. Equity is 90%, multiply equity by 90%. And we get our weighted average, which is going to be, of course, if debt is 10% and equity is 90%, it's going to be close to the cost of equity. So when you finish your calculation, use common sense to figure out. Because some people will make a mistake. They'll put 10% on the wrong side and 90% on the wrong side, right? their answer will be 6 point something, right? But if you look at this, you can see that my cost of equity here is 11. So I have 90% cost of equity. The cost of capital must be close to 11, not close to 5, okay? So does this make sense? Yes, 10.41, it's closer to 11, okay? So we, do, we find the cost of capital for each, each level. And we just see which is the lowest one. And we find out that here is the lowest cost of capital. Okay? Then we say this is the best debt to equity ratio for this company, according to the numbers. This is where our cost of capital will be lowest. If we use this much debt and we use this much equity. Do you have any question about that? So we can put this on a graph and we can see that this pink line is the cost of capital. And the blue line is the net present value. So as the cost of capital goes lower, our net present value gets higher. And at this point, our cost of capital is lowest. Okay, around this, 40%. Okay? Then my cost of capital starts to go up. And my uh, net present value will go down. So, let's just go through this with an example for Disney. We'll do this for Disney. So these are the steps. First, we have to estimate the cost of equity at different levels of debt. Okay? Equity will get riskier as debt gets more, the leverage goes up, beta will get higher, cost of equity will increase. We are going to use the bottom of beta, right? We said the bottom of beta is better than the regression of beta, okay? So, we use the levered beta calculation. Then number two, we're going to estimate the cost of debt at different levels of debt. The default risk will go up. Which restaurant is more likely to default? 0% debt or 90% debt? Do you understand default? What's an easy word in English for default? Hmm? Easy way to say default in English. Is default a good word or a bad word? Yes. yes, what's an easy way to say it in English? Bankrupt. Go bankrupt, fail, don't pay back your loan. Right, most specifically, don't pay back the loan. If every time we have to say don't pay back the loan, it takes a long time. So we just say default, it's quicker than saying don't pay back the loan. Right? So default risk, the risk of not paying back the loan, will go up. The default spread will go up, our bond rating will go down, so the cost of debt will increase. You saw that on the table when you were doing your calculation. You have AA rating, your default spread. Okay? BB rating, default spread is higher than AA rating. So <laughs> then we can also use the interest coverage ratio. So our interest expense is going up. The more debt we have, the more interest expense we have. Okay? Then the worse our rating, 
the higher our cost of debt. Okay? Then we're going to use our cost of equity and cost of debt, put into this kind of equation, and find the cost of capital at every point. And then we'll, we'll uh, know which is the best by looking at the lowest cost of capital. So we can do this for Disney. First of all, the cost of equity at 0%. This was our unlevered beta for Disney, 0.733. This was unlevered beta for Disney when we found the bottom-up beta, right? So uh, we are going to find the... <coughs> we'll put this into our equation, risk-free rate plus beta times the risk premium. You remember the cost of equity equation? You shouldn't finish this course without knowing cost of equity equation, right? Equals the risk free rate plus beta times the risk premium, okay? Risk free rate, what's the risk free rate these days? Yeah, what is it? These days about 2.4, right? Beta depends on your company. This one depends on your company. What's the risk premium these days? Also depends on your co company. Okay, what re where does your company get the revenue? Okay, if your company gets revenue only in the U.S., it will be 5.7. Okay, something like that for employee premium. But if your company gets revenues, a lot of revenues from Asia or Africa or South America, it's going to be higher. Okay, and then we have our beta. So as we put in our beta, beta goes up. As the beta goes up, our cost of equity is going to go up. Okay? So we can see that here. So at the start, we don't have any debt. Our levered beta is here. We have 10% debt. We, did the we can do the calculation here, right? Our levered beta will be 0 0.733 times 1 plus 1 minus the tax rate times the debt to equity ratio. Okay? If our if our debt is 10%, what is our debt to equity ratio? Can anybody tell me? So that could be an exam question. Debt to capital ratio is 10%. What is the debt to equity ratio? We need the debt to equity ratio for this calculation. So I'll do this calculation now. So, debt is 10%. Equity is 90%. Okay, what is my debt to equity ratio? What do I need to do? What's the equation for debt to equity ratio? The clue is in this. What is the equation? Debt, the clue is in this, debt to equity ratio, right? Debt divided by equity. So, equals what? 1 over 9 equals what? 0 0.11, right? Not 10%, 11%. So we can see the difference between debt to capital ratio and debt to equity ratio, okay? So we need to use debt to equity ratio in this equation. So don't confuse the two things, okay? So when we're, that's our lever to change our beta from unlevered beta. Unlevered means, leverage means debt. Unlevered means no debt. You know on in English, right? Unknown, nobody knows, okay? Unlevered, no debt, okay? Then we have to lever the beta, means adding debt, add on the debt. So this is the equation. Beta times one plus one minus the tax rate multiplied by debt to equity ratio. So, uh, cost of equity will be at this point in 2013, it was 3.5% plus levered beta times the risk premium for Disney at 6%. So each time we put in this levered beta, at 10%, the debt to equity ratio will be 11.11%, okay? And uh, this will give us a levered beta if we put this in here of 0 0.7838 and cost of equity when we put our lever beta in here of 8.2%.
So we just work through. This is we can use a Microsoft Excel to save time, right? In Microsoft Excel, we can put in the equation and then just drag and drop the cells, okay? And we can find our cost of equity at each percent. So clearly, my cost of equity gets bigger. It starts at 8%, goes up to 18%, and even 32%. Okay, here we have debt to equity ratio is 900%. So, next step, calculate our cost of debt at the different percentages. So now we know our cost of equity at different percentages. Next we are going to calculate the cost of debt. So, uh, let's take a break first for 10 minutes, then we'll discuss how to do that after the break. Do you have any question about what we discussed? Okay, so far.